it's all about humanity. And here we go again. It is Bitcoin Boomer time. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are coming in from. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am Brian, the UK Bitcoin Master, and this is your alternative to the crappy BBC. This is called the Bullish Bitcoin Channel. If you are in Bitcoin and you want pure signal, if you want bullish Bitcoin conversation, or if you're brand new and finding my channel and you want to try and learn to understand why we say Bitcoin, not crypto, this is the channel for you people. Every Monday, every Thursday, 6 p.m. in London, wherever you are in the rest of the world, work that out for yourself. I go live for 30-ish minutes and I rant about Bitcoin and I hope you guys get something from it. Well, you must do because you keep coming back. Either that or you've totally lost your marbles. <laughs> I don't understand what, what, what it is, but hey, it's good to have you all here. It is the 4th of April, 2024. Crikey, do you know, I can't believe that. I remember when I started my podcast and I was saying it is April the 23rd, <clears throat> 2018. And it's like, oh, my Lord, that's six years ago come April the 23rd that I would be live streaming. Absolute madness. There we are. It is what it is. So if you're new to the channel, read the disclaimer. That is very important. Um, I'm going to get through some preliminaries so we can get right into the show. And then I'll give you guys a little bit of a shout out. So very, very quickly, uh, check out the links in the show notes where you can follow me somewhere else. That's, uh, in my opinion, a really important thing to do. For those of you that are new to my channel, you won't know that about four or five years ago, my channel was taken down by Google for no reason at all. It actually, tell a lie, it was within the early COVID area, so probably three years ago. It was taken down for no reason, along with Bitcoin Meister, who's in the chat. And we had to fight tooth and nail to get them back. And I don't think I'd have even got mine back if it wasn't for a Bitcoin Meister sending me some links of some people at Google that I reached out to. And incidentally, we sort of both got them back almost the same time. So if you're following me on my backup channel, which is, as you can see there, um, UK Bitcoiner. Actually, it's not on there, but it is when you go into it. Yeah, UK Bitcoiner. Then if this channel ever gets taken down again, I will move my live stream across to UK Bitcoiner, continue going live there. And then you would have continuity, not wondering, oh, what happened to UK Bitcoin Master? Has he stopped? because I haven't stopped. So it's well worth following me, people, on another platform. Um, if you're not on the Orange Pill app, get on it. 10,000 free sats if you use my link. Uh, becoming the social layer um, of Bitcoin. Really, really fantastic platform. Merchants are over there. Group chat over there. UK Bitcoiners is there. Bitcoiners from around the world. I've, I'm teamed up with on the Simply Bitcoin one as well. So it's well worth checking it out. And if you want to get 10,000 free sats, there you go. I've got to shout the show sponsor out before we move on. The best of Exmoor. Great holiday company here in the UK with over 200 properties on their website. Whether you're looking for sea view properties, whether you're looking for properties to sleep one, sleep 21, sleep one night a month in the beautiful part of Exmoor National Park, which is in the southwest of the UK. Uh, well worth at least checking it out. And you can do that uh, by scanning this QR code um, that will take you right there. He's a Bitcoiner. His name's Chris. Um, he accepts payment in currency. He accepts payment in Bitcoin. And you can also get a discount if you use my discount code. OK, uh, and last but not least, I couldn't get back into the chat and say hi to you guys without looking at the countdown clock. We are, according to my clock, 15 days and 12 hours out from 900 coins a day being cut in half to 450. That is going to be epic for the price of Bitcoin if you're in it for number go up because the demand from these ETFs is not going to ease, but the supply is going to get cut in half. And I use this phrase a lot. I think all hell is going to break loose. So, um, 
just exciting times. I cannot believe we were saying this a couple of months to the halving. Now we're just over two weeks away and the whole thing's going to kick off. Absolutely crazy. Uh, right, so let's see who we've got in my chat. Um, I like to give you guys a shout out. John G, regulars. JB Bitcoiner is with us. IOM Driving, good to have you in the house. Educate yourself, saying hello from Poland. Great to have Poland with us. Smash the like button, really important. Stuart Griffiths is in the house. Elaine, Mrs. UK, is downstairs. Um, uh, MP Wilson, good to see you. Bitcoin Meister, as always, good to have you. Adam Yorkie, Bitcoin is with us. Mr. 60, we've got Cliff Morley, Joe Mellon, Lance Hoddle, Vinny Rondo, Staten Island in the house. Matthew Underhill, good to see you, Matt. Bards Dobnik. Um, hey, listen, people, if you want to get my attention and you want me to read something out or say something to you, all you need to do is in the chat, type in UK Bitcoin Master as it is in my bio and then a message. And for me, not you, it will light up in bright orange and I'll gladly give you a shout out. Uh, MW, good to see you, buddy, uh, from a secret Spanish island somewhere. Uh, always good to have you in the house. Very quickly, we are flirting with 68,000 again. We tipped over it about 10 minutes ago. We're now at 67.8, so we're recovering nicely, as we always do. Uh, <laughs> Now, most of you on this channel probably know this anyway, so I guess I'm preaching to the converted. But you know what these big institutions and the whales do? They try to shake you out of your Bitcoin. They spike the price, take the price down. They liquidate shorts, longs, and all that stuff. And then the people that don't understand Bitcoin don't understand that they've got to zoom out and look at this over a long time frame. They go and get freaked out of their coins. And guess what? BlackRock buys it all up. Don't do it, people. All this is, and I'll show you something that will substantiate this shortly, it is just a correction on the way up. That's all it is. So stay firm, keep stacking, all is going to be good. Now, you won't want to miss the video at the end, I don't think, because that is where the title comes in. Sold a mansion for $2.5 million dollars and just bought Bitcoin with it. Now, that's conviction, in my opinion. And I actually personally think seven years ago next month, if I'd have had a million dollars, I'd have probably thrown it at Bitcoin as well, because I was convinced almost immediately after getting down the rabbit hole and seeing it, and I just deployed every bit of dry powder I had, and every bit of dry, dry powder I get, I stack more sats for my descendants' futures and hopefully for a little bit of us, you know, a little bit of profit off the top or whatever you do as the price goes where you want it to go. We only get one crack at life, people. You want to enjoy it a little bit, and so do I. So let's get on over to the desktop and see what we've got. So that video's coming up a bit later. Uh, I've got a few news articles I want to cover uh, to get going. Here's one from Crypto Briefing. Bitcoin registers price growth for seven months straight. That is seven green candles in a row, people. And they say we're not in a bull market. Data aggregator CoinGecko shows that Bitcoin closed March priced at $70,854.60 with 16.8% gains. And CoinGlass data shows that this is the seventh consecutive month of growth for the largest crypto by market cap. It's coming. And you wonder why it's coming. I took this from Invest Answers website. I thought I'd share it with you. There is an entity called Mr. 100 um, that is literally buying Bitcoin like it is going out of fashion, like 100 at a time or 102, 105, 109. Look, he gobbled up, he, she, they gobbled up nearly, well, 1,256 Bitcoin in just 36 hours. And you know what? They know where this thing is going. And so does the person at the end on that video. So stick around uh, for that. Uh, from Crypto Newsflash, Bitcoin ETFs to buy 10x more Bitcoin than miners can produce daily. Halving projected to drive 100k price this year. 
look, I don't make price predictions on this channel. What will be is what will be, but I think we probably will breach 100K in 2024, and then we'll get that big blow off in 2025, and who knows where that might go. I mean, Plan B is talking of over 500,000 uh, per coin, but again, that's price predictions, which I won't ever make on this show. Uh, the crypto landscape is witnessing a seismic shift with the entry of spot ETFs, especially for major players like BlackRock and Fidelity. These ETFs are buying Bitcoin at unprecedented rates, often exceeding one billion in daily inflows, as detailed in a CNF YouTube video. This surge is reshaping the market, possibly overshadowing the halving's impact. Um, you know, sometimes the halving can be a bit of a nothing burger. You know, it's like a sell the sell the news or sell the event, whatever it is. The halving comes, a load of people dump out, and the price can tank. That can happen. I'll show you something in a minute that will underpin that for those that are sort of relatively new to all of this. Um, the Daily Hoddle. Quant analyst Plan B, I was just talking about him, unveils massive Bitcoin price target, says $200,000 Bitcoin, very underwhelming. Uh, Plan B says his stock to flow model, which compares the amount of a commodity in circulation divided by the amount produced every year, suggests that Bitcoin will see an over 660% uh, rally from current prices before the market cycle ends. Uh, and quote, so the next stock will not be in this year, next top, I'm sorry, will not be in this year, 2024, but in next year, 2025, he said. That top, some people talk about 200,000 as the next top. You can see on this chart, he showed a chart on his website, uh, that that would be very underwhelming. Now, let's talk of the correction, if we can use that term, from 73, I think we hit, or was it 74, down to 64. So a 10K, or a, I think it was around 6% drop. And I'm now going to show you a chart that actually shows drops leading up to the all-time high in history. So these red, this red line is the all-time high in 2017, where we topped, thanks to Aimstone for this as well. I took that off his channel. Aimstone, I hope you didn't mind me putting a few red lines on it. Um, but look at these corrections on the way up. 43, 40, 34, 34, 40, 41, and 31 percent. We then look at the top in 2021, and again, 23 percent, 15, 32, 23, 50 percent. And here we are at the moment. The highest percentage drop at the moment is 22 percent. So, people, there is nothing to freak out about, in my opinion. What do I know? You know, I'm just a pleb that's been down the rabbit hole almost seven years. But for me, I just yawn when the price drops 10 grand. It doesn't bother me. OK, Bitcoin's price could get cut in half. I'd find some dry powder to buy more. When you have that type of conviction, Bitcoin can do what it does and you're just going to stack because you understand the Warren Buffett quote is people get stinking rich when there's blood in the streets and they run into the buildings buying up everything they can on sale. And that is where Bitcoin is at. It ain't going away, people. It is only going up over time, in my opinion. Now, this is the one I cannot get my head around for love nor money. This guy, fake Toshi, has just had all his assets frozen, six million of them, I believe. He's got laughed out of court in the UK with his with his case against Peter McCormack and Hoddle Nort. And here he is again at it again. He's now considering possible legal action against Apple over the Bitcoin white paper that was on some of their MacBook computers. I mean, does he never stop? It's already been proven that he's not Satoshi. So therefore, if he's been proven that he's not, how can he then possibly go after Apple, uh, you know, for putting the white paper in their Macs when he's not Satoshi? I don't get it. Self-proclaimed Bitcoin creator Craig Wright has hinted at a possible legal battle against Apple over the storage of Bitcoin white paper on its computers, claiming it violates copyright laws. Well, it's nothing to do with him. He's not Satoshi Nakamoto. A UK judge said that. 
In response to a Twitter user who asked if Apple might be in breach of copyright for storing the Bitcoin white paper on his computers, the Australian computer scientist said yes. Let me tell you now, I, I think the guy is a fruitcake. I think he has lost his mind. I think he's like one can short of a six pack. I really do. One brick short of a house. What's wrong with the guy? But he keeps trying to do it. And as Matthew Underhill said, what a plonker, Rodney. Absolutely, what a plonker. And here's another plonker. Sam Bankman Free tells ABC News, I never thought that what I was doing was illegal. Oh dear, poor Sam, after being sentenced to 25 years in prison. Throughout the past weekend, SBF communicated with ABC News via email from the, the Metropolitan, uh, Metropolitan Detention Centre in Brooklyn, Brooklyn, reflecting on the series of bad decisions in 2022 that led to ex FTX insolvency. The ABC News report quotes him admitting his failure to uphold the high standards he set for himself, despite not believing his actions were illegal at the time. In quote, I never thought that I was doing what I was doing was illegal, but I tried to hold myself to a high standard and I certainly didn't meet that standard. I mean, dear, oh friggin dear, the money that was moving through FTX and that parent company, can't remember the name of it, that Caroline Ellison was in control. I mean, crikey. Take one look at that girl. And would you want to park your money in a company that she's heading up? Not a chance for me. You had Clinton and freaking Tony Blair sucking up to this guy. You know, he was buying, um, making massive donations to, I believe, Biden's, um, his his um, presidential uh, campaign. I mean, crikey, I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I don't get this. I just don't get it. Here's one just to be mindful of. The scams are out there. This was on Protoss. Unauthorized Ozempic meme coin rug pulls millions of traders. A meme coin, OZMPC, unaffiliated with the trending blood sugar drug, launched on Coinbase's blockchain. Can you believe that? Within an hour, CoinGecko's terminal warned that the Oz Ozempic Ozempic, whatever it is, mean coin had precariously thin liquidity across its traders pairs. And yet people will still go and get sucked into it. That is why you got to get them, reach out and get them to find channels like mine and lots of others that will give pure Bitcoin signal. Rocky Palumbo gets in there. Good to have you in the house, dude. Um, uh, and this one. You got to be careful, uh, and and thank you, Adam Meister, for this. Don't put people up on pedestals because one minute they're your friend, the next minute they're not your friend. You know, Argentina creates mandatory registry for Bitcoin service providers operating in the country. In other words, we want all your data. We want to know what the heck you are doing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, you know, if you are pro freedom, libertarian, etc. You don't want to put up with crap like this, you know. So, of course, we've got to report what is going on out there. Of course, it's great that, you know, a, I believe a G7 nation, am I right in saying that? Is Argentina a G7 or is it a G20? I can't quite remember. A massive nation, you know, at least the guy came in, he's pro liberty, pro liberty to a degree, you know, pro own your own money, be self sovereign, etc. Um, but there you go. You know, I guess they always show their colors in the end. Vinnie Rondo, good to see you in the house, uh, my friend. Okay, Mike Dooley's with us. Good to see you, Mike. Um, okay, I found this tweet from Shifty Pete. He's at it again. This is a couple of days old, bear in mind. Bitcoin just tanked over 3K in 10 minutes. That's almost a 4.5% drop. It's equivalent to a $100 drop in the price of gold in 10 minutes. Gold is actually up a couple of bucks. If this turns into something bigger, woo, ETF investors are trapped until the New York Stock Exchange opens tomorrow. <laughs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. When is this guy ever going to wake up and realize he's on the wrong road and then stop and get on the right road? Because he is going to go down in history as an absolute buffoon, in my opinion. Okay, uh, David Marcus, thrilled to announce that Coinbase has selected LightSpark 
to enable the Bitcoin Lightning Network across its platform and services. Yet another significant milestone for Lightning to many millions of new people and hundreds of countries coming soon. I remember showing a video of um, David Marcus on this channel maybe a couple of months ago, and it was really great to see how he'd got Bitcoin and was now going to donate the rest of his life, his time on this earth to Bitcoin, building Bitcoin and lightning out. And this is what's playing out, people, behind the scenes when the regular plebs going to work, working hard, enjoying family time, and then watching a YouTube video here and there and thinking, oh, what's happened to the price? It's gone down again. I want it to go to the moon. They don't understand that the the innovation behind the scenes is absolutely breakneck. And, well, you just got to buckle in, people, because the ride's going to be awesome over the next five to ten years. It really is. Um, Bitcoin news. <coughs> uh, Bitcoin to reach 150K by the end of this year, per Morgan Creek Capital Management CEO Mark Yusko. Yeah, he is very, very bullish on Bitcoin. But if you watch Mark um, Yusko's interviews when people talk to him, He's firmly got his feet on the ground and he definitely understands finance being the, is he in a hedge fund or whatever he is, a fund manager anyway. Um, you know, and he doesn't overbake it. He sort of tries to play that down a little bit. That That's my view anyway. So, you know, can you just imagine how you're going to feel, anyone's going to feel, if Bitcoin hits 100K, 150K by the end of 2024 and that's just the start of the real bull just it's all coming. Fantastic. You know, something else. This is where it's all happening, going on behind the scenes. Billionaire and New York Mets owner Steve Cohen says he owns a little bit of Bitcoin because of his son. The question there, how much do you think he considers a little bit? Hey, who knows? He's a flipping billionaire, for goodness sake. But there are so many major players in the space that are getting hold of this, understanding what it is and realizing, realizing it's a hedge. Yeah, I said that earlier, Rocky. Plan B says it's going to be over 500K by the end of 2025. Um, yeah, who knows? He hasn't got a magic wand, but, you know, he is a pretty clever guy. I'd say that. He uses a lot of models and people always say they're broken. But, of course, if you look at his um, stock-to-flow model, it is going to fluctuate above it and under it and above it and under it. But I looked at one of his charts the other day, and every single point of the halving, that blue dot was bang on where it 90 degree goes upwards on over the last three halvings. So, hey, maybe he is onto something. Who knows? But none of us have got a crystal ball. But you do want to be stacking. This is the most important time to stack whatever you can. Sell your chairs, sell your grandma, sell everything, and buy those sats. Johnny Midas, good to see you, sir. Um, Willie Wu said this one. Ever wonder why Bitcoiners are so extreme? Consider that holding is not easy. It involves suffering being underwater for three years out of four and then riding rocket ships for the final year. It's like chewing glass 75% of the time, then snorting coke for the last 25. And I don't advocate that at all. Don't touch any of it. But you take the point. That is what we're up against. People, when, you know, Bitcoiners are extremely wealthy, you know, they will vilify us. They will say, you know, we got rich for just buying something and, lazing around. They don't understand what it takes to hold on to your wealth tied up through the highs and the lows of the Bitcoin epochs. And they'll just say, we got lucky and they just don't get it. And you'll never explain it to them. They just will never understand. But he's got a valid point there. Adam O, Denver Bitcoin, you're going to blink and Bitcoin will be 269k. AI LARPs will change their bios to Bitcoin slash crypto advisor slash expert. Friends and family will start gambling on centralized poop coins again, taking custody of nothing and losing most of it. Destined to relive the nightmare forever, I feel. That is the cyclical nature of Bitcoin that I learned from Adam Meister, Bitcoin Meister. Bitcoin is cyclical. You know, we have the 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 the, the boom and the, the ICO craze we had. We've had the flipping ordinals craze that, that took took the um the fees through the roof. We're gonna get more 
um, people coming in and gambling on these meme coins that are out there, the poop coins that are pump and dump schemes, and they're going to lose all of their money. They really are, and, and they just can't see it. And as much as we try to – sorry, yeah, my grandma's passed, Joe, <laughs> but I sort of quite like that, that one. Um, uh, as much as we try to educate people, you know, here's the reality in my opinion. I believe – that you either see this or you don't. We know that once you see it, you can't unsee it, okay? And I believe this is a 95% five. Five percent of people that are shown this will see it, they'll get it, they won't understand it, but it will take them down the rabbit hole, and 95 will either dismiss it out of hand, have a go with a poop coin, lose some money, and then dismiss Bitcoin as the same, and then those people, unfortunately, are going to stay poor. I hate saying that because, you know, people are getting poorer and poorer and poorer with money printing, with inflation, with everything that's going on. Um, the have fun stay in poor bit I don't tend to use. But the 95% of people are just going to get poorer and poorer and poorer. And all the wealth is going to move across to the Bitcoiners. I'm convinced of it. But you've got to allow the years to roll on for all of that to play out. And then there's this one from Gary Cardone. Um, he's an entrepreneur and I think digital asset investor. I sold my 2.5 million mansion for Bitcoin. I'm all in. Well, let's have a listen to what he had to say. And he even stands out on the lawn of the property he's just sold and breaks it down on a whiteboard about why you don't want real estate, you want Bitcoin. Tune into this one. It's about three minutes. A couple of people have been asking me what I ended up doing with my home down the road. Uh, I did sell it. I lowered the price. It was, I think it was pitched at 2.8. Lowered the price, I think 300 grand. Immediately started to get some traction. It sold 10 days later. I wish I had 30 homes. I would sell them all. I would buy Bitcoin right here and I would wait and I would wait and I would wait and I will be proven to be absolutely spot on correct. And I'm probably underestimating the opportunity here. So I continue to look around all my properties, all my assets, uh, my investments in other things and try to figure out what is a better investment. What I'm doing there or does Bitcoin or some other part of the Bitcoin industry offer me greater opportunities? So the question is, hey, what are the pros on Bitcoin that real estate doesn't enjoy? Because real estate does enjoy some characteristics currently that uh, Bitcoin doesn't enjoy. But the cool thing I like about Bitcoin is it requires no maintenance. The roof never leaks. There is never a plumbing problem. There's no electricity problems. There's no annual tax that if I don't pay it, I don't really own the home. If I own Bitcoin and I'm holding Bitcoin, there's no one that can tax me if I'm holding my Bitcoin and I'm not liquidating it. I have no human error risk. I have no insurance requirements. I have no flood insurance requirements. I have no rain or hazard insurance requirements. I mean, what isn't great about Bitcoin? Quite frankly, it's a low maintenance, requires some security understanding some responsibility. It requires an understanding of a fiat world that's decaying by the moment. Um, yep. Other Agreed. than that, it looks to me like the greatest opportunity in the history of mankind. And over the last 15 years, it has proven to be exactly that. This house was costing me around, um, call it about 8,000 a month uh, in mortgage, utilities, maintenance, upkeep 600 bucks a month just to mow the grass probably a 500 dollars electric bill insurance eight grand a year so i sat on this property for three years okay i bought it for around 1.8 i put 600 grand in it i am basically gonna make zero on this house in two and a half years i then took these funds after the commissions so about two point two five million and I bought Bitcoin I bought Bitcoin for you guys that are you know oh Gary bought it at 30 and he's shilling Bitcoin I bought Bitcoin at 68 no 66 eight one eight I bought two and a half, two and a quarter million dollars worth of it okay that was three weeks ago uh, it's worth 70 grand today okay um, and we'll see what it's worth in a year. But I, my bet is it's worth in one to two years, three years, a heck of a lot more than the return I got, which was zero after I factored in commissions, utility fees, taxes. Taxes aren't even included in that, okay? Um, insurance, 
maintenance, improvements. That fence wasn't here. I put the fence in. That's 60 grand. So let's see what this trade's like. Homes are not investments. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm not a multimillionaire. Okay. Um, he obviously is. Uh, but when you've got people of that caliber and that type of wealth saying, I've sold a home. And I'd sell 30 homes if I had it to put that into Bitcoin. What you've got to do is look, what is the message there? The message is these clever people have realized that, like Sailor said, owning property is like a melting ice cube. Sure, the, it goes up over time, but it is going to go up nowhere near what Bitcoin goes up in, say, a 10-year period. Ain't even going to come close. And more and more people in property slash real estate are getting out of that because now the fastest horse in the race is Bitcoin. So I hope you got something from that. I know I certainly did. Um, it made me, even though I already know it, realize that I'm in the right place at the right time. And you guys are too. So, you know, if you've held through the brutal bear market, if you are, if you bought the top and you rode it all the way down and now you're riding it back up, way to go. Give yourself a pat on the back because, you know, you need a real tough stomach to deal with the volatility that is Bitcoin. But as soon as you get comfortable with that um, and you know it's going to happen, like that chart I showed you 10, 15 minutes ago, that it happens. You know, it can't go up forever. It's got to take a breather. Some people that bought years ago will probably take some off the table and there's a little bit of sell pressure, which then brings it down and holds it sideways or makes it drop a little bit. It consolidates and then it goes up again. You saw what happened in the 2017 run up, six, seven, whatever it was, major corrections, you know, some of them over 50%. We had an 80% correction, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in 2018. Don't quote me on that, but they were pretty huge. It went from 20K down to, I believe, 3.2. And I got a load of dry powder in um, a few months after that, in about August 2018, and it was back up to around 5k, and we bought a load more at 5k. And I'd love to have bought it at 32. I really would have done, but it is what it is. Okay, my quote of the day: "The secret of getting ahead is getting started," said Mark Twain. And isn't that true? Get off zero. All we're trying to do is educate people on Bitcoin and hopefully get them off zero. I saw something right at the top before I started the show um, from Uncool Hodler. It's not showing up now. He's just got his brother to buy 8K worth of Bitcoin. He said, admittedly, it's in iBit. He said, but it's a start. It's better than having zero exposure to um, Bitcoin. If you want to support me and you don't have to, there's some SATS addresses. There's a buy me a cup of coffee with crappy fiat from anywhere in the world address. Um, if you want to support the show because I haven't monetized it, buy me a coffee if you want or don't. I don't mind. I don't want you to. But I always say nothing is required, but everything is greatly appreciated. It really is. Uh, so. That is it again. We're done getting excited about the weekend. We have the next installment of our private 21 million club coming up. Pretty excited about that one. Um, thank you, Rocky. Yeah, see that? Not this Saturday, but next. Yes, it is the 13th, I believe. Yes. M. Warner. Um, good one. Good to see you in the house. I haven't missed anybody, I don't think. That's it, people. Um, have a great morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Go into the show comments after the show's aired, please, and leave a message. I don't care if it's crap video, good video, hi, well done, Bitcoin's great, Bitcoin's rubbish, whatever. Leave a comment because that then messes with the YouTube algorithm. We can keep it on YouTube, on Google current for longer in the searches, and maybe we can save a few no noobs from getting absolutely wrecked. That's it. I'm done. Going to leave you with my social media links. For those of you on the podcast listening, thank you as always for listening. I'm sorry you can't see the images I'm showing. Maybe come over and join us on YouTube at some point so you can sort of see the things I'm sharing. That's it. I'm done. I'm out of here, peeps. Catch you all on Monday, 6 p.m. London. Come back and join me. Support the channel. Don't forget to smash the likes, uh, share it, retweet it, do all that stuff. Um, it will go up on Rumble in a few days, uh, BitChute, all that stuff. Anyway, I'll catch you all on Monday. Have a good one.